Well, welcome to week three of our series on the Holy Spirit. As we're walking through this Easter tide season, it's our desire that we would grow and learn not only about the Holy Spirit, but in our experience with the Holy Spirit. In week one, I kicked off this series by teaching from John chapter 14, and I'd like to draw your attention back to the person of the Holy Spirit by reading from John 14 in the Amplified Bible. Do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, cowardly. Believe confidently in God and trust in him. Have faith, hold on to it, rely on it, keep going, and believe also in me. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, to be with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and will be in you. I've told you these things while I'm still with you, but the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, stand by, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things, and he will help you remember everything I have told you. Peace I leave with you, my perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. In week two of this series, you got to hear a conversation between Bill Clark and Tammy Roach and some of their experiences with the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit operated in the Old Testament culture where the Spirit of God would come and go, and how we're in New Testament days today and the Holy Spirit is always with us. Today, our third week of this series, I'm excited to inform you that we've got a guest joining us online today. You're gonna get to meet a very dear friend of mine. His name is Ruben. And you know, as you consider the global crisis that we're experiencing today, Reuben also lived through a tragedy of his own. In 2010, he survived the earthquake in Haiti, and he has quite the story, an incredible testimony, and he's gonna share a little bit with you today about how the perfect peace of Christ through the presence of the Holy Spirit carried him through one of the darkest days of his life. Meet Reuben. Hey Reuben. Hi, how are so you? good to see you, I'm well. Tell us how things are in Haiti. Things are okay for now, you know. Uh, everybody's kind of, those that can, try to stay inside as much as they can. But, you know, it's not that easy in Haiti. When everybody's life depends on being outside in the public market or everything else. So, But we're here, you know, and ready to help when, when, when the time comes. Yeah. Well, we were just talking earlier and realized that we have yeah. over a decade of friendship behind us now. Yeah. Uh, and it's yeah. good to be with you. I, I just have to tell the Redeemer family briefly how we met. Do you yeah. remember that day? I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in the back of Otis's pickup truck in the countryside of Haiti, um, we were talking about a young lady that you were interested in. Yeah. And uh, I asked you, well, what's the problem? What's the delay? And you said, there's one problem. Uh, Amy is Otis's daughter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Otis was the vice president of Mission of Hope, yeah. still, still is, and also your boss. Yeah. So, pretty bold, my friend, to fall in love yeah, with boss's cool. daughter. I know. Yep. How'd, that, how'd that work out for you? It's been good, man. Nine years of marriage, so <laughs> nine years and three days. It's been, it's been awesome. Yeah, two kids. God has been good to us. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. I also found a picture of the four of us from 2010 uh, there in Haiti. And we also had our daughter Ellie with us, yeah. who was not even one year old at the time. So yeah. 
we go way back, my friend. I'll I'll stop and let you let you greet the Redeemer family. Yeah, yeah. It's good to be with your church. Uh, I've visited the church once, and it was a great day. And it's good to be with y'all. And uh, thanks for having me. Well, um, looking back over time, you know, Andrea was my wife was scheduled uh, to interview for a position with Mission of Hope Haiti on Tuesday, January 12th, 2010. Mm -hmm. And prior to her interview that day, we heard the catastrophic news of the earthquake, which claimed Mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of lives. Um, Your experience is a very memorable, powerful Mm -hmm. experience. Would you share a little bit about your day on Tuesday, January 12th? Yeah, man, you know, it was a regular day. I would I would say you know we 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 stopped school right before Christmas. I think the twenty second, and then the twelve was basically the first day back. Excited, you know, everybody looks good. And last year of Bible school, planning on graduation in May that year. So there was a lot of excitement there. Good to see friends we haven't seen in a few weeks. So, and everybody got to class. Uh, I would say class was about to be over by six thirty. And the earthquake hit by 5.50 p.m. So I was in building, it was a two-story building where we were down on the first floor with 65 students, including myself. And we don't know earthquake. We've never seen earthquake before. We, we, we don't know how to react. We didn't know how to react. Something like that happened. So when the earthquake hit, building started shaking. We all panicked. And think about those buildings. You've seen them in Haiti, what a typical classroom looks like. So 65 people can't feel packed. And it was a packed house. We all had been in there. We didn't even know it was packed until the moment, right? That same exit door was also the entrance. So imagine all 65 of us trying to make it to that one door. And that's when the chaos and panic happens and the building collapses and, and everybody got to stay in. Stay in means the whole concrete, the whole thing just collapsed on everybody. And uh, it was one of those moments when you hear the, the sound, the noise and everything else, it, it felt like, you know, it wasn't real. It felt like we were dreaming. I did feel like, you know, that that's not happening until I realized I'm stuck with things over me, with people over me, and I had my only right heart that I could move. Uh, realized I'm there, you know, and uh, the weight was you know, uh, intense, the smell, and also the hardest one was basically watching my friends die. Uh, that's the hardest one to deal with and, and know that I couldn't do anything. You know, I got one arm, I couldn't even save myself, I couldn't, you know, uh, do anything to help. And, and that's when things get, you know, uh, crazy for me, being upset, being angry, you know. As a man, you want to do something. You want to help yourself and not to help yourself. So it's not easy. Uh, I think that's the hardest day of my life experiencing. I've never experienced that much fear mixed with anger at the same time. Uh, and it was a hard one to, to, to process. Also a hard one to know, you know, why would, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to leave this earth here. In the Bible school, I felt like God had a plan. I knew it. I mean, you know, I knew God, God, I would not waste his, you know, his resource and everything I've been through before that day. Why, why today? You know, that's the question I could not, I could not find an answer to. Uh, and when, when there's no answer to anything, and I feel death is close. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was mixed emotions and, and crazy, crazy ideas were going in my mind. How long were you trapped that day? I was trapped until 10, you know, 9, 10 p.m. So that's a few hours uh, when, when, you know, uh, to be there. And those hours felt a long time. A long time means, you know, uh, I felt, you know, not much blood circulation down my legs. You know, the moment I thought I was paralyzed, you know, I didn't know what was going on. You know, I could only move one arm. So it felt like forever. And, and again, that, that's when there's the, just tension we're building inside. Why is nobody coming to help? You know, I could hear all of those vehicles driving by. I could hear the helicopters, the police sirens, all those things going on because we did not know this was a, a citywide event. We thought 
our building collapse and me and, and them not having that much information, upset about everything, you know, why nobody's helping me, we're screaming and, and friends are you know, leaving us just like that, you know, you know, so mm-hmm. it was a, it was a difficult time, uh, but man, yeah, even still today, think about it, talking about it, you, I, I, I you know, I remember, you know, it's, it's, it's feel, feels real, giving me goosebumps, yeah. And you've shared with me that that one of your classmates in her final moments mm-hmm. was whispering, great is thy faithfulness. Yeah. You know, experiencing fear and anger at the same time was crazy. And uh, those are moments where, I, you know, I even doubt my, if God even exists, those questions. You know, I've said this before, I was angry at God. I felt like God was in the room, we would fight. Why would why are you leaving me down? Why are you letting me down right now? So there's that feeling was going on. But man, that song was supposed to be one of the songs we would sing in that great God version day, which means before class we sing it. We, there was a little bit of practice going on, right? So because it was already in the atmosphere and the environment before the whole thing happened. And I got to hear. He, listening to her singing was the moment where I, I, I exhausted, physically tired. I couldn't do anything. I think I kind of let go, let go away. Okay, well, well, I can't do nothing. And uh, and then hearing that for ten to fifteen seconds, uh, that's when I know that's the feeling I've you know I've, I've never experienced before when fear and anger is replaced by something supernatural, that by the Holy Spirit, by something God brought into me, a peace that, you know, even explaining it today, man, can't get me emotional. You know, when, when I, I realized, man, I was just crazy angry, and then something happens. And, and, you know, God was there with us and with me at the time. And I realized, my goodness, he's truly faithful. No matter what happened here, I know it is. And knowing that, that revelation changed everything. Death become, you know, the fear of death was gone. The anger was gone. And immediately fell joy, although I couldn't move. Yeah, so. It seems like in that, in that moment, that breaking point where you were most desperate and angry and afraid. Yeah that was the moment that you feel the spirit of God, God's presence was there with you ministering mm-hmm. to you and replacing fear and anger with peace and joy. With peace. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's I've never experienced this before and it changed my life forever. It changed my life forever. Even today, help me look at people differently. Help me look at difficult situations differently. And, and, and taught me, there's nothing too big for Jesus. You know, that, that was the truth. There's no moment that it could be for Jesus. I, I, I lost a lot of friends. And, and today, I remember some cases, you know, uh, but man, that, you know, that sadness or those moments of missing people that we knew, or I knew, uh, God's presence is way bigger than that. You know? Yeah. I'm reminded of David's words in Psalm 139 where he writes, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? (laughs) If I go up to the heavens, you are there. And if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. And Ruben, you're clearly um, a man who has endured um, some of the most horrific moments. And, And through that event, hours upon hours, feeling like death was near. Um, Yet God was with you. Yes, sir. God was there. And you say that moment, I I mean, I imagine that has an impact on your life every single day since. Yes, every day. That's why I do what I do. Uh, I always tell people, that's why I do this type of work. Because there's a song we sing it every time, so my life is not my own. I belong to Jesus. And that's the truth of my life. You know, it's, I feel like God allowed me to leave a few more years for a reason. I know that deep inside. Uh, 
I know one of the reasons to have two beautiful kids, you know, I can uh, get the opportunity to be their dad. Uh, being part of his work in Haiti or all over the place, you know, uh, those are moments, reasons that God spared my life uh, to be here. So uh, it helped me. I feel like I get to love people more or better. I see people through crisis lens. You know, it's a different, different approach to everything. Uh, doesn't mean I, I forgot the, forget those moments, right? Or they they're still with me, right? I remember those things. You know, I don't want to forget it, uh, but I'm not afraid because whatever God put inside of me is bigger than fear, bigger than than everything. Yeah. Amen. Amen to that. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot right now because I know exactly what song you're referring to. Yeah. And I've heard you sing it uh, oh, nice. there, there <laughs> in the Mission of Hope Church so many times. Can you sing the chorus for us? My life is yeah. not known. Yeah, because my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. That's how it goes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's a beautiful I love song. It. Man. Ruben, do you have any final Thank parting you. words of challenge or encouragement yeah. for the Redeemer Church family? Oh, man. I, you know, I mean, I watch the news every night, and uh, I'm not there at the moment in, in the States, but I, I know it's hard, those moments, even here in Haiti, millions of people. Uh, I always I pray every day that virus don't break out here, because if it does, like it is in America, we will lose a lot of people. Uh, it's a hard one to process, but uh, but God is greater. Uh, I think that's it. That's the truth. God is greater. Uh, faith is believing in something we don't understand. Really, I don't know what's the, what what God's plan for for the world post this. I don't know what He's trying to teach us. Right? I know He didn't bring the virus to kill people. I know that. I believe in that. But I know he's got something going on, so I, we're gonna we're gonna trust in that and 100 percent rely on him and then let him lead. It's a hard one to do, especially for me. It used to be the hardest one for me to allow God to take control of everything because I want to lead, I want to do it myself. But uh, moments like this, moments for us to really let go and let God lead our lives and let God lead our our families, our kids, and all those things, man. He He's in charge. We never let go. He's still here with us. He said he would never leave us. And there's nothing better than that, knowing that Jesus is always going to be with me every day, every night through the coronavirus. No matter what comes, he's with us. So uh, that can bring peace. That should bring peace to us and allow him to, to bring the peace inside of us. That's wonderful. Well, Sure to miss you, and uh, yes, it's great to see you. Please tell your sweet yeah. bride and your kids hello from us and the Redeemer family. Yeah. Thanks for your time today to get, yeah. uh, encourage our church, and we will keep you and your family in the ministry of Mission of Hope Haiti in our prayers. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you very much. Bye. Love you, brother. I love you, man. God bless you. Take care. God bless you. I hope you were encouraged to hear from Reuben today and to hear a little bit of his testimony. I'm so thankful he took time to encourage our church family. Let's now continue to worship together. <laughs> 